Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimczewski with Adam Atkinson. We're in episode three in our off-season training series, and we're going to move into the variables that we've been mentioning, but hit them head on now. So things like frequency, how often do you train a muscle group, uh, duration for how long, uh, what kind of load do you use? There, there are you know two or three more variables that are important, but I, I want to say, Adam, this is something I've addressed more and more because people have used uh, Brad Schoenfeld's work as kind of a definitive answer, which is, uh, in in general, I, I will I will generalize his meta analysis in that that total work in a week matters most. And so, if you did let's say you know thirty two sets for one muscle group, whether you did that in one session, two sessions, or three sessions, the the question is, you know, what is best. And, and again, just looking at the preponderance of evidence already out there, uh, his analysis is that, that generally two times a week is best, but it's still total work over time. And I think that, again, is just a little too simplified because you can't measure things very effectively like long-term progress. Where are these people at after two years, five years, 10 years? Um, how do we know that one person, you know, their perceived exertion is the same as somebody else's? So let, let's try and pick this apart as much as we can, knowing that, again, it, it's so subjective in terms of what everybody does in the gym, in terms of quality of motion, recovery, sleep, just every other variable. But when you start programming for a client and it's down to, okay, how many days a week? Is it going to be a three day a week lift? Four, five, six, seven, how many times per body part? Tell me your process, if you don't mind, of how you even conceptualize the progression. Yeah, I, I always start with the days first. Um, how is the split going to be lined up? I like to allow for flexibility. 90% um, of my programs are going to allow for that unless somebody needs to achieve something so fine-tuned. Um, I've only had a few clients like this. I'm almost trying to keep them out of the gym because they don't need to grow, but then they struggle without being there. So we find other um, modalities, just cardio for them to enjoy. Um, but I would say in most general cases, um, let's say their glutes are weak. I'm going to try to program that in um, on a seven to day seven to 10 day rotation where they're hitting glutes, you know, two to three times within that seven to day, 10 day rotation. So I'll usually start there, um, make sure the muscle groups are divided. So there's at least 48 hours um, of rest between a glute session and another glute session. So um, kind of lay out the split for the most part. That's usually where I'll begin. And then I do prioritize some strength up front. But if they're getting a third session in the week, I might actually do a higher rep week versus uh, a lot of strength stuff as well. So um, in a nutshell, I would say that's a general layout. Mm -hmm. and, and in our fifth episode, guys, we're going to actually cover progression. So we'll revisit this topic. But to, uh, to continue on just talking about these variables, um, I was I was presenting at a conference with Brett Contreras uh, a few months ago, and and we had a private conversation, and um, he agreed with me wholeheartedly. And it was funny because both of us were like, "Man, I can't find anybody else in the industry talking about this." But I proposed to him that that people don't necessarily need twice a week or three times a week of training if they're training with a lot of intensity focus or strength focus. So sometimes it doesn't have to be a linear weekly progression. You can do what you said, like a ten day split within a you know, two week time frame or something. That means you're gonna get three of those cycles in a 30 day month, for example. But you know, one of the things that Brett said also is, especially with the infatuation with the glutes, everybody wants to train glutes you know, virtually every day. And in his own presentation, he said, look, if you get maximum results from training them once a week, do that. If you get maximum stimulation and results from twice a week, do that. And he said, for people who just feel like they have to be at the gym every day and doing glute work every day, he said, I will, of course, give them what they want, but I'll do things in kind of a light way that's just maybe lightly stimulating. And, you know, I know it's not helping them, but it's not hurting them. I'm not going to give them, you know, super heavy frontal plane work, you know, deadlift, stiff legged deadlifts, hip thrust, you know, six times a week. And so I think that's why you see a lot of those, those extra kind of auxiliary movements coming into play because people just love to be in the gym. 
Yeah. You know, people are uh, really arguing uh, band effectiveness right now. And, you know, is it the greatest? Probably not. But at the same time, um, you're only seeing the bands. You're not seeing the other workouts that my clients are doing. So um, that's always the point that I like to argue is, um, you know, the squats, the deadlifts, the hip thrusts, um, all these things are being used in conjunction with the band. So um, we're not only doing banded workouts anymore. However, what people forget are some of the top pros are only doing handed workouts. They're just trying to maintain what they have. So people need to forget what they're seeing, that that's what's provided them with those results. They need to think, oh, I need to do what, you know, maybe I'll use Ashley Kaltwasser as an example of what she was doing back in 2013, you know, to get her glutes to where they are today versus what she's doing now. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to move in in episode four into volume distribution, how to actually spread this work out. But just to put a fine point on what you're saying here, think of it in any, any other body part. So let's say that I'm, you know, I, I have a pro client and, and he said, man, for my off season, uh, you know, as we get started, I want to really work on my upper chest and chest width and so forth. And so I had to go through some of these physiological principles and I had to say, well, you know, just think if we trained heavy upper chest three times a week, you know, think what would that do to your rotator cuff tendons, your supraspinatus tendons, you know, do you think you would actually grow from that or, or see a decline in results? And of course, the answer is you would see a decline. So how then can we distribute the strength work versus hypertrophy and spread that volume out? So uh, appreciate your comments as always, Adam, we're going to we're going to pick this up in episode four. So you guys stay put and we'll be right back. 